So what's going on everybody? It's been a while since I've uh, sat here and really kind of chatted at you for a moment, but there's a few things going on. I wanted to kind of update you on uh, what's going on here with me. Um, my ch uh, video uploads have kind of slowed down a little bit, but that's because the con I got some content coming. I'm just kind of saving it all, you know? So anyways, um, this is another beer review video, but I also want to give you an update on uh, the char griller. Uh, acorn situation um, so I'll go into that after we go through the beer so uh, what I've got here is the St. Arnold Elissa IPA and uh, it's just a 12 ouncer and this is brewed right here in Houston Texas St. Arnold has uh, been around for quite a while they're one of the largest craft breweries in Houston and they've got a really cool building downtown and a big beer hall where you can sit and try all their different beers. And uh, this one uh, is actually uh, associated with some history in Galveston, Texas, which is like, you know, the main island where you can go for fun at the beach or whatever. Um, but uh, it's related to the Elissa Tall Ship, uh, a historic ship that uh, ported in Galveston. So what I want to go over is, let's see if we can find the ABV here. So I got my uh, phone here because I wanted to pull up the information about this beer. And what I got here is, um, it's a 7.1% ABV. Um, it wasn't on the bottle. All right, so I couldn't find it on the bottle, so I had to pull it up. Um, it's got British malt in it. Uh, it's got Maris Otter for the base malt and a medium crystal malt as well and it's a single hop beer with cascades so that's interesting uh, can't go wrong with cascades so uh let's go ahead and get into this bottle and uh, see what it looks like this is my first time having it for sure so it's a twisty that's when you know you've gone good and gone big is when you got twisty bottles <laughs> glass bottle commence Right away, it's got a real yellowish tint to it, orangish yellow, definitely the yellow greenish yellow coming from the hops for sure. And uh, very well carbonated. Nice color on it though. Really like, I really dig that color. Very pale, like a pale malt for sure. IPA, but. Borderline like a pale. If it didn't have so many hops in it, it definitely would be a pale. And I'm already smelling the hops from like where I'm sitting. I can smell them without even putting my nose on this. So immediately, man. Um, citrusy. Yeah, very citrus, floral, mostly citrus smell to this. Um, malt character can't even can't. Not a bit of note of the malt in the nose at all. Just give it a whirl. Yes. This is a really bitter beer. Um, not double IPA bitter, but it's, uh, it's definitely you can hear, you got the body of the beer is great. I mean, you can feel the body cross the tongue and you get this bitterness that just kind of stays on the tongue uh, long after the beer's gone. So let's try this again. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's good beer though, man. Definitely good beer. They, they've got this one. It has a real clean uh, flavor to it. Uh, real clean, real hoppy. Um, bitter on the beginning, bitter in the middle, and bitter at the end. <laughs> you can tell this was probably, you know, a full 60, 30, 15 and dry hop on this beer. Or flame out, even. It's pretty hoppy, but you can totally tell it's Cascade hops. You, I, I love Cascades, uh, them and Centennials. Centennial Cascades, uh, they're safe hops to use if you're unsure. But uh, man, this is great. Mm. 
If you ever come to Houston, we have several good breweries around town. Uh, the craft beer scene is blowing up. Uh, the St. Arnold's is one of the, the older ones and uh, they've got their beers down to a science, no doubt. So, anyways, the char griller, acorn situation. Okay, it's, uh, what, in my last video I said uh, the acorn, uh, I was getting a new unit. Well, not so much. And I'm not disappointed because I didn't really expect them to replace the whole unit, just what's broken, like most companies do. <sighs> Excuse me. <laughs> so, they're going to actually send me the, bo the middle bottom piece. They sent me the middle bottom piece. The guy misunderstood me. I needed both the bottom and the top. And I can refinish my ash pan on it. I'm, I'm not worried about that. Um, I can sand the ash pan down, paint it with the high gloss, uh, uh, high heat paint, and that'll hold. So I'm not really worried about the ash pan, but I gotta be able to screw the hinge into the body and the top. So it's functional, you know? It's not safe to, it's not safe to cook. Uh, with the lid rocking all the way back and the chance of it actually falling off. Um, I've read online that some people have had this issue uh, that the rivet that holds the bolts, w uh, when they put them together, they didn't uh, quite crimp them enough and so they're slipping out. <laughs> so if yours is slipping out, uh, contact customer service, provide pictures, a copy of your receipt, and if you ordered it online, it's pretty easy to get. If you didn't order it online and you threw your receipt away, you might have a little bit more trouble finding your receipt, but uh, they did warrant it. So if you have any problems with your acorn and you're doubtful that they'll warrant it, go ahead and hit them up, see what they say. They might warrant it. Um, I, I was on the line of just buying a full-on ceramic um, if this didn't go through because it's like, okay, I've already got 300 in this thing and these full-on ceramics are getting cheaper. They're, they're making cheaper models and they're full ceramics and they, and they keep coming down in price as competition builds. Because it was a big green egg and uh, Kamado Joe were like the big competitors. And then now you got Vision, now you've got uh, Bayou Classic doing it. Uh, uh, there's a few other ones out there that are making uh, full ceramic grills for a fraction of a big green egg or Kamado Joe. And I think uh, as more of these full ceramic grills come on the market, we're going to see a huge drop in price on those grills. So, but anyways, I'm hoping I get mine by 4th of July. If not, I will improvise um, with my current setup. Mine's not completely unusable, it's just not safe. <laughs> so, I have to exercise caution. Uh, I'm planning on doing bacon wrapped beer can burgers. I don't know if you guys at barbecue or, or big barbecue hers, whatever, um, are just into barbecue. The big craze right now is bacon wrapped burger, uh, beer can burgers. <laughs> you basically take a beer can, you put it in the middle of the burger, and you kind of form it around the can, pull the can out, it makes a, bur a bowl that you stuff with whatever ingredients. I am going to show them in a video soon uh, when I cook them just so you can guys see my rendition of them. So, anyways, I know I'm yammering here. Uh, it's been a while since I've actually sat and talked without like stuff going on around me. And uh, uh, brewing videos are gonna be coming up again too, but uh, I wanna get some more cooking videos out to you guys. And new subscribers, thank you so much for your subscription. It means a lot. I appreciate it. Um, I can't believe how fast this channel has grown and just the last couple of months. Um, I don't know if it's because cooking season's <laughs> coming around or uh, or electric brewery's become a big thing too. So I got some electric brewery people coming in and interested in the grain parlor. And, uh, and we got a lot of Kamado cooking people that have Kamados that uh, have come on board. So thank you for coming on board. I appreciate it. And uh, we will uh, post a barbecue here soon. It's not really a barbecue, but it'll be the beer can burgers, and uh, we'll post that here real soon, guys. So, thank you for your subscriptions. We'll see you here soon. Happy Fourth as well. If uh, I don't get the video posted in time, cheers. <laughs> <laughs>